Bill. Killer me just pulled up. Tell the boys. Killer me just pulled up. Okay, Waxy. Get your dirty hands off the bag. What's the idea? You know this is Bull Brown's territory. It was his territory. Those monkeys don't excite me. Oh, no. No. got joy. I thought things were too quiet around here. It couldn't last. I'm telling you, Bull, ever since me fell for that showgirl Maisie Walford, he's been hard to handle. You're right. He is getting too aggressive. If he hadn't been so bullheaded, joy wouldn't have got knocked off. I'm going to tone me down. I wouldn't be so sure about that. From now on, you carry out my orders, not yours. What about Joey? You think I'm going to let Baron get away with that? Joey's case is my problem. You're wrong. It's our problem. And I'm going to call on the Baron. 
Pay my respects with Joey's compliments. If you do that, Baron's gang is sure to start trouble. And I'll finish it. And I've just come to the conclusion, Bull, if I can run this racket for you, I can run it for myself. Is that a threat? Take it any way you like. I'm sure the boys wouldn't like the idea of you running my business. The boys are with me, Bull. They want action in a fair percentage. You've never given them that. They know I will. A small-time guy trying to play big shot. Take him. I wouldn't. There's only one way to run Harlem. My way. Too bad you won't be around to see it. Danny. Yeah. Bull looks a little pale. I think he needs some air. You better take him along, too. Wait a minute. Let's talk this over, Mead. After all, we have always been pals. So was Joey. Now, boys, you'll get a square deal from Bob Mead. That's much better. Too bad we had to do that, boss. You and me and Bull were all raised in the same neighborhood. Why, I remember when we used to have the tin can telephone from one fire escape to another. Sorry, boss. Guess you're gonna be a big shot in Harlem now, killer. The biggest, Slicko. Has the jury reached a verdict? The jury has, Your Honor. The defendant will rise and hear the verdict. Silence. Silence in the court. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. you didn't have a chance. But I knew they couldn't convict you, Bob. Whatever else you might do, I know you wouldn't commit murder. It's nice of you to say that, Maisie. Come on, we're gonna celebrate. But, Bob, I can't. George Stevens is waiting for me. Let him wait. Oh, no, Bob, that wouldn't be right. Listen, sugar, possession is nine points of the law. I've got you now, so... But, but you're forgetting one thing. What's that? George and I were engaged long before I met you, and, and I couldn't just leave him standing there. Oh, uh... Danny. Yeah, boss. 
Uh, George Stevens is outside waiting. Suppose you take good care of him until we get back. Got you, boss. Okay. But That's boss. all right. Ever since the killer drew an acquittal, he's going plumb bad. Yeah. Can you imagine him having the nerve to spread it around that he's going to cut in with you? So he's going to get in with me, is he? Well, we'll see about that. Hello? Uh, Lou Barron talking. Is Meade there? What's on your mind, Barron? Now there's no need in causing any unnecessary trouble. Yeah? Why, well, there's plenty of room for both of us. That suits me fine. I'll be over. What's that? In about half an hour? Yeah. This may be a trick. If it is, it'll be Baron's last one. Did you really mean what you said about you and me getting together? Sure. As long as he figures he's entitled to a cut in my business, we can't disappoint him. I want you to see that he gets just what's coming to him. It'll be a pleasure. Your hunch was right, Danny. What hunch? Look at that. That looks like Meat's car. Let's go. Get going and don't try anything. Hello. All the floors? Yeah. I want you to fix me up two very nice funeral wreaths. Uh-huh. Some uh, friends of yours? No. Not mine. Yours. Oh, uh, I see. I'm glad you do. Now, Baron, let's get down to cases. I want you to figure what I got coming for my half of your business. Did I understand you to say your half of my business? Those guys were screwy when they told me you couldn't hear good. Anything the matter with your hearing? Not a thing. Okay, forget this, Mead. You bumped off Bull and you've taken over his territory. But start messing around with me, and you're heading for a one-way ride. Say, Danny? Here, yeah, boy. Didn't Lincoln make some kind of a speech about you can fool all the people some of the time? But you can't fool all the people all the time. That's right, boss. You ever read that speech, Baron? If you haven't, you ought to read it sometime. Let's go, fellas. By the way, Baron, I'm sending a man down to look out for my interests. I want you to make him feel right at home. Be seen. Sugar, you just give me a chance, and before I'm through, I'll lay Harlem at your feet on a velvet cushion. Nothing can stop me. Watch me from now on.
got to stop. No, it can't go on. What do you mean? Say, I'm telling you, he'll ruin us. Yeah. Why are they stealing us out? It's your play. Bob, you're not concentrating on the game. What's that? You aren't even trying to play. Oh, I'm sorry, sugar. I guess I was thinking. Do you mind if we stop? Of course not. I don't know what it is, but every time I come up here, it does something to me. What do you mean? Well, I'm going places in a big way. I'd like to take you with me. But my life is so different than yours. I was wondering if, uh, well... If I could take it. That's it. Might be awful tough on you. Now, you take George Stevens, for instance. Poor George. He's just about the unhappiest man in Harlem right now. Why? You see, George and I haven't been getting along so well lately. How come? He quite disapproves of my continuing on the stage. He doesn't think it's proper for the future, Mrs. Stevens. Honey, why don't you give Stevens back his ring? I'll give you one that'll make that one look sick. I'll do anything for you if you'll only give me a break. I love you, Maisie. I want to take you away from here. We'll travel all over the world and find out how to really live. Bob, I don't know what to say. You do care for me, don't you? If that's Stevens, I'll talk to him. You'll do nothing of the kind. Hello. Who is it? Just a moment. It's for you. Now, who'd be calling me here? Hello? Yeah. Boss Lieutenant Holmes is here and says he wants to see you. Is it important? Tell him I was in the neighborhood and just dropped in for a little friendly visit. Tell him I'll be right over. What did he say? He says he'll be right over. Sit down. Make yourself inconvenient. Guess I got the wrong book. Keeps me busy collecting this publicity. Yes, I guess it does. He's going to take an awful tumble. You're right. He sure fell hard for Maisie. Sorry, sir, but this is strictly private. Must you go? Yes, sugar. I've known the lieutenant ever since I was a little kid. He's about the only copper on the force who's an all right guy. But I'll see you later, huh? Will you join me? No, thanks. I prefer my pipe in the quiet surroundings of my home. Well, what can I do for you, Lieutenant? Nothing at all. Felt sort of lonesome and thought I'd drop in for a little chat. I've been reading the newspapers about you lately. Kind of brought back memories of the days when I was a cop and used to chase you kids off the corner of the old neighborhood. Remember? Yeah, but those days are gone forever. Yes, and so are a lot of the kids. I had great hopes for some of them. Too bad. Sure is. But you seem to be getting places, me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Neither would I. What are you driving at, Lieutenant? Oh, nothing especially. I was just thinking about the future. I'm afraid you're going to miss a lot of things, me. Like smoking your pipe in a nice, comfortable home. The missus are sitting across from you in front of the fireplace. And a couple of fine kids are playing around the room. See you again sometime, me. Yeah, do that. By the way, how's your flower garden getting along? I'm having a lot of trouble with my carnations lately. It seems the soil's too rich for them. Oh, you'll have to do something about that. Yes, I guess I will. Take a tip, son. It's impossible to develop anything successfully when the soil's too rich. Anything I can do for you? Not a thing. I'll be seeing you sometime. If you do, I hope it's a social visit. <laughs>
about the sweetest girl I ever met. You were doing all right until you said a boat. <laughs>
Pardon me, Maisie. I'll be right back. All right. Looks like trouble. We don't want anything to start here on account of the girls. This door here leads to the kitchen. Good. You go get the car. I'll pick up Maisie and slick them and have Phil take the other girls home. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Something just come up and we gotta leave right away. What's the matter, Bob? Don't ask questions, Macy. Let's go. Come on, get up. They must be here someplace. Take a look. Right. Hey, Lou, they just scrammed out the back door. Come on. Turn right at the next corner, we'll lose it. You're in danger, aren't you, Bob? Nothing serious. I just didn't want you to get mixed up in anything. I'm terribly worried. Forget it. Please be careful. Sure. Now run along. Baron is going to come to a head, quick. What makes you say that, killer? The guy's desperate. If he can't get me out of the way, he's through and he knows it. You're right. Danny. Yeah. Call the boys and warn them. Tell them to be careful. Okay, boy. <laughs> You Maisie Walford? Yes. I'd like to talk to you a minute. What do you want? We don't like to inconvenience you like this, but we want you to do us a little favor. In what way? We're a couple of friends of Bob Mead's. We'd like to have you give him a little serenade. If this is a joke... It's not a joke and we're not asking any favors. Get on that phone and start singing the same song you were just playing. Well, I can't sing on the phone and play at the same time. That's all right, sister. Butch knows how to play. Go on, Butch, do your stuff. Sure. You aren't Bob's friends. You're his enemies. <laughs> now, sister, your singing can't be as bad as all that. Get on that phone. Operator, give me University 4, 4620. I can see you're a smart girl, Miss Walford. Me talking. Who? Maisie. Bob, I, I want you to hear the new number I'm going to do. Well, well, I'm so wild about it, I just can't wait to try it out on you. 
If you don't think, listen, you've got another thought coming. Wait a minute. Boys, Maisie's going to sing. I want you to be real quiet here. Yeah? Got you, boy. Okay. Okay, sugar, I got everything fixed. Go ahead. Remember the night we met at Ruth's Cafe? You took my breath away when you're... Remember the night you thought you'd take a chance and ask me for a dance and we danced so divine and then the night went by, a week went by, a year went by, till we're together. Remember the night you thought you'd take a chance. They gave us the show, and we both fell in love. Remember, remember the night. That was swell, sugar. That number will be a hit if I ever heard one. What was the name of it? Go on, warble another one. But Go on. I'll sing another chorus, Bob. Sure, go ahead, sugar. Something's phony about this. I asked her a question, she didn't even answer me. Remember the night we met at Ritz Cafe? You took my breath away when your eyes met mine. Remember the night you thought you'd take a chance? And ask me for a dance, and we danced so divine. And then the night went by, a week went by, a year went by. Hello, hello. Thanks, sister. They aren't doing anything to him. Didn't I tell you he was just giving him a little free entertainment? He'll get a big kick out of it, too. Maybe you're disconnected. Thanks for the help. And the cure will thank you, too, when he sees you again. The line went dead. I don't get it. Neither do I. Something's wrong. I mean, her voice didn't even sound the same. Come on, let's go. Come on, Phil. So they got you. Funny, ain't it? Why, he wouldn't even hurt a fly. Looked up to me like I was an idol or something. Slim, take care of Slickum. Come on, boys. I've got a hunch band frame this whole thing for your special benefit. Yeah, for my special benefit. Boys, we got some exterminating to do. Hey, you guys, where's the band? Hey, you. Bob! 
Maisie, are you all right? Two men forced me to sing that song to you. I figured as much. Is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Don't lie to me, Bob. Please don't do anything you'll be sorry for. Forget it, sugar. Everything's going to be all right. I knew I could count on you to do the right thing. Tell me that Baron's in his office now. Lou Baron's in his office now. Good, Danny. I'll see you later, sugar. Promise me you won't try to even score at Baron. I promise you anything in the world but that. Don't worry about it. Everything will be over this afternoon. Then we'll get married and take that trip. But I'm not going to let you, Bob. You'll get yourself into something you'll never be able to get out of. If you go to Baron now, I'm going to notify the police. You wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? You've done a lot of things. Terrible things, perhaps. But don't think for a moment I'm going to stand aside and let you really commit murder. Don't get yourself worked up. I'm warning you, Bob. Listen, Maisie, you stay out of my affairs. Go on home and wait until I get there. Office. He has more respect for you than anyone in the world. Please go and stop him. Don't let him get into a terrible jam. We'll get over there right away, Miss Walford. Thanks for calling. Bill and keep the motor running. Come on, Danny. In the meantime, we might figure out a way to get rid of him. Yeah, that guy's blowing us top. Come on. Aren't going anywhere, are you, Baron? This is my party, Danny. For heaven's sake, me, don't shoot, don't!
Carl. Surprised to see me, ain't you? I kind of thought you would be. Come on, I want to talk to you. So, you turned me over to the coppers. I told you I would. Oh, you told me you would. So that makes it all right, you little double-crosser. Bob, you don't know what you're saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I suppose I don't know Phil and Danny are dead. Oh, no. That's what you wanted. No, it ain't. You wanted those coppers to get me. What a sap I've been. I might have known you'd turn out to be a cheap little stool pigeon. Why, for two cents, I'd... Come on over here. Answer that telephone. Be careful how you talk. Hello? Yes, this is she. Lieutenant Holmes speaking. We followed Mead to your apartment. Is he there? Yes. Who is that? Lieutenant Holmes. The police have the place surrounded. He said you haven't got a chance of getting out alive. All right, Lieutenant. I'll tell him. He's coming up here to have a talk with you. He won't do much talking, if I see him first. How could you do a thing like this to me? I was only trying to help. Won't you understand, Bob? I did it because... because I love you. Love. <laughs> That's a good one. A lot you know about love. Won't you believe me, Bob? I even gave George's ring back. Why didn't you tell me this afternoon? I wanted to, but... but you couldn't think of anything but killing Baron. It's too late now. Isn't it, Bob? Yeah, Maisie. It's too late now. We had happiness almost at our fingertips. Yeah, that's it. We had happiness almost at our fingertips. Maisie? Who is it? Lieutenant Holmes. What's this, a trick? You have my word, I'm all alone. What do you want? I want to prevent a lot of shooting and save somebody from uselessly getting hurt. I want you to come along with me quietly. Please, Bob. Okay, sure. I'll come along with you. Keep your chin up, sugar. I'll beat this rap. Then I'll come back and fix everything up, just like we planned. I'm afraid you won't beat this rap, son. I feel sorry for you, too. You'd only planted your seed where the soil wasn't quite so rich. I ain't in no mood, Lieutenant, to hear about your flowers. Let's get this thing over, quick. Just a minute. I hate to do it, son, but I got to put the handcuffs on you. Yeah, I understand, Lieutenant. <laughs> Thank you.
when they break the law that's the way they all go sooner or later